And there's a whole lot of sin, but it ain't for the reason you think. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Sin City, episode four of Supernatural season three. This was the first episode that was full on written by Jeremy Carver. He was a story editor of this season and would eventually go on to be the showrunner for the show for season eight and would produce one of my favorite seasons being season 11 before leaving. And I'm really kind of mixed about this episode. One part of me really likes this episode, that being Dean and the demon having a conversation about hell, demons in general, the idea of Lucifer being a godlike like entity to the demon kind and actually forming a relationship to the point where you actually kind of come to care for the demon and you actually are interested in this character and when she eventually dies at the end of the episode you actually feel a ping of loss for it which is you know good writing and then you have the other half of the episode which is about sam trying to find out what's going on in this town and they've got the general from stargate who it leads to one kind of funny joke, but it's not really that great. Like, Sam's story in this episode is so pointless. The only kind of beneficial part to his story is the father character, who goes from being a really cool guy, because he's a priest, but he's also a demon. The concept of him is really cool. And then when you find out that he's a demon, you don't get Shit. You get absolutely nothing about him. How long has he been doing this whole priest gig thing? We know that demons can enter churches, but isn't it a bit weird that he would have to be doing church services? Like, wouldn't he get kind of a bit of a twinge when saying the morning sermon? This is a part of the episode they don't spend any time on, and it's such a wasted factor for this episode. And there's also Richie. Yet again, another terrible Hunter character introduced in season three and exiting out just as fast. It seems to be a sort of a trend for Dean to have these friends appear in one episode only and never be referred to again, yet Dean knows about these people. Wink wink, nudge nudge to that episode of season 15 where it was essentially a giant squee fest episode. And then there's a third part of the episode where Bobby is trying to find out how to remake the cult and Ruby appears. There's actually a pretty cool standoff between Bobby and Ruby. In the end, she helps him make the cult. The episode comes to a climax again when Sam and Bobby, Ruby, and the demon priest converge and she actually tells him to not kill Dean because she's grown to like Dean. And this is seen through the conversations that we got to see the two have. We see that she feels pity for him. She understands his reasoning as to why he sacrificed his souls for Sam. So both of their deaths, not so much the priest, but definitely her, are felt at the end of the episode. And it helps to woe in that seed of doubt of whether or not Sam is who he says he is. Because Dean asks that question of Bobby and Bobby kind of gives that, nah, demon lie. I kind of wish that after this, as they were walking away, we kind of just looked at Jim Beaver's face and he had this face of concern, of unknowing, of somewhat fear. That would have helped with that horrible line. But the fact that we don't get that, we just get Bobby written into a situation that's much like the bucket of chicken in season two's ender. I didn't think it would happen so soon. One half of this episode I really like, and there's another half that is either pointless or just kind of wasteful. I could chalk this up to the writer's strike, but at the same time, this is kind of just a concept not fully realized. It's a cool aspect. I like the idea of humanizing the demons almost to a sense. I like the idea of making them, at least one of them, relatable to the point where we actually care more about this one than Ruby because Ruby's still being a stone cold bitch. It's just a wasted potential because like I said, I really like one half of this episode. I like half of it. The other half is either wasted or just kind of eh. So in the end, I'm going to give Sin City a four out of seven. It's a shame because like I said, I really like one aspect of it. I really like that demon girl character. Oh, also should mention the bar that they keep going to. That used to be Choo Choo's in Langley. It's not Choo Choo's anymore. It's a Mexican restaurant the owner sold. They literally found lettering that looked exactly like Choo Choo's. They didn't bother changing the coloring or anything. It's interesting to see just for my sake because I used to go to this restaurant quite often and they were also filmed at quite often. So it's a bit of history for me for my teenage years. In the last episode, I asked you guys to give me your comments about this episode. So let me read some off now. 
I honestly don't remember Sin City as a whole that much, even though I watched it fairly recently. However, I love the conversation between Dean and the demon, as that was all super interesting. I also love that they mentioned Lucifer, which really got me excited. I also love the scene where Sam, where he is about to kill the demon, Dean tries to stop him. I thought that really added Dean's character. Like I said, that's good writing and makes you feel for a villain character that you would normally, up until this point, been given the impression that you should not like these. It, technically, demon prejudice, technically. Not to say that they haven't deserved it. Sin City handles House Lucifer is brought up as a deity towards the demons really well. I got chills every time Casey talks about how demons hate hell and would rather be on Earth. With everything moving forward in the show, it makes you wish you saw how Lilith and Alistair were running hell, because Crowley's hell was funny and disturbing also till season 10. I remember the line. The forever line that just loops over and over. I remember that was really funny. I really wish we got more exposition on how Ruby knew how to fix the cult. Notwithstanding how Ruby's blade is utilized in the show, it would have been interesting to see if she would have used the blade to melt into bullets, because clearly she knew how to use metal in a way that could kill other demons. Yes, I'll actually give you that. It would have been interesting to see more of how Ruby was able to fix the cult other than just being a demon. Again, writer's strike, they're trying to come up with a few things and just cutting away is like, eh, so that's what they had to do. I thought Richie was getting interesting and then the writers pull a Game of Thrones. I don't know, he was never really getting interesting to me. <laughs> this episode would have made more sense with the seven deadly sins rather than the pilot episode in my opinion. I really like how this show expresses how temptation is more natural inclination and not the devil made me do it pity card. Still one of the funniest moments of the show is Sam using holy water on Trotter and not affecting him at all. It's interesting later on in the show how demons don't really affect City. I kind of wish we saw stuff like this in Season 5 of the Apocalypse and the angels start questioning if humanity is worth giving paradise. That would have been a cool idea. Admittedly, there was a lot obviously going on in Season 5, but yeah, that, that's a, it is an opportunity that could have been further gone into. Sin City is interesting. The conversation between Dean and the Demon Girl is definitely the only important part of the episode, I agree. She mentions Lucifer and how he's considered the demon's god because he created them. She also mentions following Sam, which she probably meant Lucifer because knowing what happens in season four and five, she might have known about Sam being Lucifer's true vessel and using his powers to free Lucifer and get unknowingly possessed by Lucifer. The cult also ha now has bullets which don't really come into play in this season or the next. Probably would have been too easy to kill demons if the brothers knew how to make bullets for it. I like how Kate Cassidy's version of Ruby, and always wonder why she didn't come back. She decided to Google to see what happened, and apparently Katie felt that the writers didn't know what direction to take her character, and Kripke said it came down to budgetary limitations. Don't know if this is true or not. Cassidy definitely jumped around and did a bunch of different shows. And also, I don't even know if they were thinking that they were going to bring her back in season four. Season three was obviously a very big, like, what is actually going to happen, considering all the writer strikes. So there's possibly some truth to this, but I can't really confirm that either. All right, that's it for this one. Next episode is Bedtime Story. So make sure to give me your comments about that episode. I'll read the best ones off in the next episode review. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.